how do we continue to be this great nation with so many gray areas when we've been told there's good and evil? Well, my, I, my worry is to people have the guts to run for office anymore. It's a high price, a high price of scrutiny. You know, your tax return, a lot of people are very self-conscious about that. They don't want it, their neighbors to know what they make a living. Mm. Uh, and it requires a kind of a embarrassment to a lot of people to even get into public life. So that discourages some people. They may have had some peccadillas, a divorce, things in their lives. They just do not want to have dragged out before their family members. And they go, I'm not I'm going to go make money doing something else. Mm. Would Winston Churchill run for office today or would have a talk show? I mean, I, it's so much easier to do the talk show thing. Uh, I think we're suffering from a lack of that aspiration. But I keep asking Democrats, who's on the bench? Who's coming up that you rooting for? Somebody in their 40s, 30s, who do you see as a potential president? Silence. I think there are people that I would like to see run. I like Tim Ryan in Ohio. I like uh, Sherrod Brown in Ohio. I like, uh, you know, Amy Klobuchar. I think I think Buttigieg at some point is going to try again. Uh, but it's not a big bench. There are not a lot of people that are willing to take some risks. Um, you know, I don't know. Big question marks there. Kamala Harris, big question marks. Just is she ready? Uh, any, is anybody ready to walk into that? Uh, Biden's had a problem. He's only in the 30s right now in uh, job approval. Something's not working there. But I think uh, the three big things the Democrats are going to get kicked on. I don't want to give the Republicans their talking points. They already have them. Mm. Cost of living, that gas tank. Every time you get up to 100 bucks. Yeah. You got crime, which is real. It is not a PR issue for the Republicans. It's real. 500 homicides in Philadelphia last year. They had more homicides than New York, which is six times as large as the population. And this is true in Baltimore and places like that, Chicago. It's horrendous. And it scares people. And they don't like it. And third, the cultural questions, the border, of course, uh, you know, the, all the questions about uh, racial history, education, uh, gender issues, all that stuff. It's a lot. Too new for a lot of people. Just too too new. Societal changes. It's all around people. And they Do you go, feel like it's the 60s in a way? Or? Today it's more amorphous. There's, there's so much change going on. But we have to still, with all this change, think about the Midwest white guy and not the bubbling up of the different it's mixed folks. It's all part of it. I'm talking about the politics and how it works, how they win. Republicans, this is going to be their big three. Since the 1940s, they've had a strategy. The American voter can only think of three things going into a voting booth. They max out mentally. So make sure all three are about your opponent and make sure all three are negative. So back in the 50s, it was communism, Korea, the war, and corruption with Truman. And then it was amnesty and acid and abortion in the 70s. What's it this year? Cost of living, crime, culture. Just watch the ads. Two years ago, the tough elections around Philadelphia, which I keep an eye on where I grew up, the Republican candidates for Congress held all their money to the last two weeks, put it all on television, all about defund the police. That's all they did, defund the police, defund the police, defund, and they're going to do it again. You watch. Wow. What did the Democrats got to say? Well, we're trying to fight inflation, I think. We're trying to deal with the crime. Or will they even say that? And we're working on border reform, immigration reform. It's not a strong case. 